Well, in an unexpected Corvette video, the Corvette is over in the stall. It's snowing and nasty out right now, but it wasn't when he moved it over. There's a few little things that we want to check and do on the car that we were going to do, and then suddenly it was winter. But one of the bigger things is we weren't real confident that the uh, fuel level gauge was working correctly, and we don't know if it's a wiring issue, a gauge issue, or a sender issue, even though it's all new. New doesn't mean good. So hopefully part of tonight we'll be troubleshooting the fuel gauge uh, system here. Okay, she's going up. Oh, you can make noise, that's fine. You can see, it's never fun locating cars like this on the lift. And our, our jump is three inches. So to clear this, instead we're using one and, uh, one and a half. So it's not ideal, but it does the job. But yeah, we already checked. It was pretty sturdy. So I'm feeling pretty confident that this will be a, a fun Corvette video. Since that is very clean and shiny, and we want it out of the way while we're slowly getting in here. So I gotta chase some wires around. Then there's a harness up here that I wanna probe, which meant all the spare tire stuff has to come out, especially since I really don't wanna scratch it all up. Better to do the work now than be repainting something later. We all know how the world works. She's pretty full. I didn't notice any issues, but now that I played with the connector, it's reading right. So that's got me nervous. So what we're gonna do is, I know where I'm at now, I'm at almost a, a full tank on the gauge. We're gonna pump some out, one, to make sure it's actually working. And then two, I'm going to, you know, we'll pick the car back up and he can watch it. But then I'm going to go down and wiggle all of that and make sure everything's good. So see right there? Well, maybe you don't see so good. It's hard to tell looking at the phone. But uh, that is over three quarter. So if we take five gallons out, that should drop. And if it does, then I know the circuit is fine. And then... I'll have him just watch it, we'll pick it up, because he's really tall, and I'll just start wiggling and wiggling and wiggling and seeing if uh, if we actually have a bad connection somewhere. But uh, yeah, on the upside, it looks like we might not have to get, drop the gas tank. Let me get the light, it's kind of neat, you can see the strainer in the basket for the, for the fuel pump, because of the way these tanks are designed. You can see that in the corner there, that's the strainer or not the strain of the basket for the anti-slosh. But yeah, that's pretty neat. Or I think it is anyway. So let's get some fuel out of here and do our test. Okay, now it's time to drop the fuel level a little. So he's pulling it with the caddy. So I've got a line I can see. I don't know that you guys can see it, but that should mean at least a good gallon has come down when I see that line. And maybe about two. Okay. Well, let me go see if that made a difference. Well, unfortunately, it is the sender. So, cracking lines, letting that drain. We've pulled about as much out of the tank as we can. So, yay! This will be fun. Well, that was fun. <laughs> we got her down. We didn't make, you know, too big of a mess. You can see, it's a tight cavity, but these things are razor blades. So one thing I think I'm going to start doing on my tanks tanks is taking things like this and uh, softening them down before they go in the car. That's the first time I got bit by one of those. Okay, well, there's a baffle in here that we've been fighting, so now, before we go back in, we're gonna see if we can read something close to full. So you can see, as he's adding fuel, she's going up. Turns out we don't have enough gas cans to, uh, that thing's full, and this is full. So we're just gonna play the transfer back and forth game, because I didn't want to get it empty enough to uh, lift up the tank. 
so hopefully these things are strong enough so we were at 10 ohms and now we're at almost 30 so assuming you know 30 ohms is a third of a tank so I'll do that yep so it's coming up unfortunately it's only one Harlan power turning it you know what do you do so we're at 40 ohms so we're gonna be getting on to almost half a tank here so right here is half eh, almost half a tank Oh, I don't know that you guys can see that. So yeah, half a tank right there. You know, assuming a linear, perfectly shaped tank, which of course none of these are. But it's really moving along. Now obviously we're not going to put it back up in the car full, but it's not a bad idea to throw a little in here and see what we get. What I'd like to see is this thing hit, you know, 80 ohms or so. If we can hit 80 ohms, I know we'll be able to read full on the tank. So, there we're at 60 ohms. So that's what, two thirds of a tank. You know, assuming all things are perfect. My one Harlan power is really slowing down here. <laughs> There's 68 ohms. So the float is floating. Now because of that baffle that's welded here, um, our float arm is already at an angle to clear it. Well, it got caught on it anyway, so we've got it bent more, and this bent more, and at a slightly lower angle, and that's why we're verifying again to make sure we're gonna read close enough to full. We should be getting pretty close. It's time for us to actually take a look inside the tank there, Harlan. We're at 85 ohms. So, might wanna see how full this is. I can see the gas. So the important part is, this tank is almost full now. She's reading almost full. I'm confident in that. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, drain as much out as we can to get back down to 10 ohms and put this tank back in the car. So, yeah, it sounds like a good fix. All right, got to tell the people we got this ready to go back up in now. Got to put the the drain catcher and a cap on real quick, and then we're set the uh, straps on and fight the good fight. That's always fun. There's literally no elegant way to do this. I'm gonna use the tranny jack to get it close, then pick it off of there, remembering that this will fall off. Try to kind of get it wrenched up over. So try to get these lips over the top in there and then we can kind of work it all up. And then slide it back and then get these back up on their pins. I don't really have a way to film it so I figured I'd explain it. Okay, we don't have anything zip tied back yet and obviously no spare tire. But I've got the lines hooked back up, the wiring's hooked up and these things are a nightmare with this aftermarket tank, getting them all lined up and getting this little spacer adapter thing up here. But we got it. It's definitely not our favorite part of this job. So we're gonna put her down while she's got very little fuel in her. And uh, we're gonna see what we can see. We're gonna turn the car on, check to see what we read now, start adding some gas, see if it goes up. If it does, and then we can take some back out and it does go down. We're gonna call it fixed and move on to other things. So we will report back in a minute. Okay, here's our testing arrangement. Okay, it's doing the little priming. Oh boy, you can't read that, can you? Eh, it's just off empty. Okay, so now let's put three or four gallons in and go see again what we got. Only this time we'll take a light with us. Or we'll turn the lights on, but I really don't want to kill the battery. So the things you gotta do to verify your work before you put that spare tire back on. So that should have been a little more fuel and look at that. 
It is. We've got almost a quarter tank of fuel. It's working. Okay. Well, let's throw a bunch in there and see what we get. All right. This tank is nice and full. We're just below the little safety lip. And when we come in here, you'll see it is full. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know how well that comes out. But here, there, I bet that's easier. And we checked like right when we were over the basket for the fuel pump, that was just over half a tank. We stopped when we were an inch over the basket and that was three quarter. And now she's full and she's full. So we're pretty happy about that. All right, she's running. We figured we might as well make sure the fuel lines are all clear. Oh, that's uh, not a great spot to stand. Just kind of doing a quick walk under, making sure nothing's falling off. So, well, looks like a car. Okay. reach in and give her a start. That's probably going to do it for uh, this episode on the Corvette. There really isn't much else for him to do, except, you know, we got to wait for for some of that to disappear. It's snowing again. But, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a running, driving car. You can take her out. He's got a few little things he wants to do, like, I don't know, put the knobs on the radio. He's got some other little detail trimmy type stuff to do yet and it's always checking 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 what's leaking tighten up bolts tighten up clamps whatever because i guarantee something leaks something always leaks so hopefully we've got nothing major leaking though so all right so there there is the first corvette video of 2021 and this has been a shop approved video have a great night. Thanks for watching.